Councilmember Member Bankston, would you please lead us in the pledge? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. This evening, Council is grateful to have Pastor Daniel Abaca of the Church of Pentecost, Eastern District, here to pray with us. Pastor, welcome back. Welcome to Council. Um, thank you very much, sir, and the President of the Council and the members. I take this as a great opportunity, and it's a great honor. Thank you once again. Shall we pray? Father, in the name of Jesus. Once again, Once again, we want to thank, thank you for this opportunity, for opportunity to serve. serve. We commit this gathering unto your hands, the council president and the leadership, and the council members are in your hands. Grant them wisdom, even as they consider things that will benefit the city of Columbus. May you grant them knowledge and understanding. Above all, establish your presence over here. And we'll forever be grateful. We thank you in the name of Jesus Christ. We have prayed. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Pastor, so much. Clerk, please call the roll. Bankston, Barossa D. Padilla, Brown, Dorns, Remy, excuse me, Faber, Remy, President Harden. Any person who takes any actions to obstruct or interfere with the conduct of tonight's meeting may be charged with disturbing a lawful meeting pursuant to Columbus City Code 2317.12. Any person who enters those areas of city council chambers reserved for city officials or invited guests may be charged with criminal trespass pursuant to Columbus City Code 2311.21. Can I get a motion to start for the reading of the journal? Clerk, please call the row. Bankston, Barossa Di Padilla, Brown, Doran's favor, Remy, President Harden. Are there any additions or corrections to the journal? Hearing no objections, uh, the journal is approved. This week's communications received by the city clerk's office are listed on the agenda and will be published in the city's bulletin. Are there any other communications to be read to the record? Not at this time. Before we go around the dais, I wanted to take a moment uh, on behalf of council to acknowledge the loss of Mr. Donovan Lewis in our community. This past weekend, his family, his loved ones, his mother, his siblings gathered to lay him to rest. And even though we pause to say his name in these chambers, nothing that we can say will uh, heal that hole that his family now has. What we have to lean on and rely on now is that there is a process in place uh, for accountability and transparency. The investigation into the shooting is being conducted by the Ohio Bureau of Criminal Investigation and is ongoing. Columbus police no longer investigate these sorts of shootings. The city no longer investigates itself. At the conclusion of this investigation, the Franklin County Prosecutor's Office will present the case to a grand jury for review. The Civilian Police Review Board that was put together um, based off of the vote of you, the people, has instructed the Inspector General to conduct an administrative misconduct investigation. That will occur at the conclusion of the BCI investigation. The details from the Inspector General's investigation will then be presented to the Civilian Police Review Board so they can provide a recommendation for discipline to the police chief. I do want to thank Police Chief Bryant for a change that she uh, 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 instituted last week. Effective immediately, no pre-planned arrest warrants may be served at private residences between the hours of 11 p.m. and 6 a.m. for misdemeanor warrants or nonviolent felony warrants unless approved by a lieutenant or higher ranking. I want to open it up to any council members if they'd like to say anything at this time. Um, I know that a lot of members um, uh, were uh, prayed with the family, put out notices with the family uh, during that time. But I'm uh, just grateful for this community for engaging, um, for uh, advocating, um, and uh, doing so peacefully uh, as we as community um, try to heal and move forward. So thank you. Councilmember. 
Thank you, President Hardin. Um, I share your sentiments in grief at the loss of life um, and that one more family in Columbus has lost a loved one. I want to add in my conversations when I've been able to meet with the Inspector General, um, I am heartened to know um, how seriously and smartly she is approaching her job on behalf of the people of the city of Columbus. Um, and one thing I am interested overall in her work and will be in this case are questions of not just accountability for what went wrong, but actually what went wrong that we can prevent in the future. To your point about the chief's change, um, what, what needs to be the rules going forward to prevent this from happening again? Um, and to hold anyone accountable where things went wrong, but to change things so that we don't have to go through exercises of accountability, so that we don't see the tragedy, um, the loss of life, the killing happen again. And um, that will be the focus of my questions. Um, and, I, and I appreciate the Inspector General being in place uh, the hard work of um, the people of the city to get that passed um, and to make that a reality today in the city of Columbus. Thanks, Council President. Thank you, Press Pro Tem. Council Member Bankston. Uh, thank you, Council President. And just want to echo that there's really nothing that we can say that's going to take that pain away. Um, as a survivor of gun violence, we are, our city is plagued by it. Um, and it's even more painful when it happens at the hands of those that are sworn to protect uh, and serve our community. Uh, but one thing I would like to continuously lift up is that there is a process that is hard to hear uh, in these circumstances. And so asking for patience from the community, but also still asking for persistence. We need that pressure and we need to hear your voice, uh, but also know that in order for us uh, to do this the right way, there are things that us as elected officials, as other folks can't say because there is a process uh, that is administrative uh, that is tied to the FOP contract. And so we have to make sure that we uh, follow that to the T to make sure um, that there is a due process and that justice uh, is served. I have every confidence in uh, Chief Bryant that if there is misconduct, that she will make uh, the decision uh, that is necessary and the right decision to make that swiftly. Uh, so I ask for patience from the community but also ask that you continue to lift up his name. Uh, and we will not uh, forget him in this chamber. Uh, and I know that I will continue to have his family in my prayers. Council Member Favor. Thank you, Council President Hardin. Uh, words truly cannot express uh, the, the deep sentiment that I feel and I know my, my colleagues share at this time uh, for the loss of life. Um, and I want to uh, convey that uh, sincerity to Mr. Lewis's family. Um, any loss of life is, is one too many. And we, our community has been here before. Um, and I know once we all learned of this news, uh, we were collectively heartbroken. Uh, but it further uh, confirms uh, this body's commitment uh, to doing the work uh, to ensure that residents are safe uh, Reimagining public safety is not just a buzzword. It is the commitment, I believe, of this legislative body to continue uh, to do work to protect residents. I applaud uh, Chief Bryant uh, and the rest of her team uh, who, who worked swiftly uh, to uh, bring uh, some positive changes uh, so that we can uh, mitigate this situation uh, from occurring in our community again. Uh, but I share the same sentiment uh, with my colleagues uh, and ask for uh, the community to continue uh, to engage uh, with this legislative body uh, to voice your concerns and we will continue to act accordingly. Thank you. And to that point that uh, Council Member Favor just mentioned around our responsibility as council, um, I'll be joining with Council Member Remy um, in hosting a hearing regarding the administration's implementation of the Community Safety Advisory Committee's recommendations. This is the community group that came together several years ago to put forward our city's plan and uh, focus for how we will move forward and continue reform. Uh, and we will have that date announced uh, in the near future. 
uh, and look forward to, to everyone's participation. With that, we will go around the dais, starting with Councilmember Bankston. Uh, thank you, Council President Harden. Just a few announcements uh, I would like to share this evening. September uh, is National Sickle Cell Awareness Month. And for those who are unfamiliar, sickle cell disease is an inherited blood disorder in which red blood cells can become sickle-shaped and hardened. The severity of sickle cell disease varies with many people facing a shortened life expectancy and a host of reoccurring, de de reoccurring debilitating, and expensive health problems. There is no universal cure for this condition, and it disproportionately affects black and brown Americans. Uh, and this is something that hits home for me, as everyone knows that I've talked about it. My wife, and she shares her story, that she has sickle cell. She was born with it. And something that we even think about with our son, who has sickle cell trait. Uh, and so it is not simply just a disease that one person has. It is a family disease. It is a community disease. And we have to come together as a community to continue to combat it. So in honor of Sickle Cell Awareness Month, our office has set up blood drives for each of the remaining weeks in September. In addition to a lighting and award ceremony taking place next Monday, September 19th at 8 p.m. here at City Hall on the Marconi Boulevard side of City Hall. This event is open to the public and arrival for the event can start as early as 745. There will be appetizers and light refreshments and a celebration of different uh, folks who are advocates in this space. And so we're really looking forward to seeing you all there. Uh, this Wednesday, uh, September 14th is the first of those blood drives for Sickle Cell Awareness Month. Uh, there was a minor adjustment that we had that we made to the location. So if you got uh, an email from us or saw the communication, it, it has now been changed for public utilities. The correct address is 910 Dublin Road. Um, and so I'm excited about the collaboration that's happening to make this month possible and bring forth awareness around sickle cell disease. And I really wanna make sure that I underscore the importance of these blood drives. The, the most common treatment that folks with sickle cell disease receive are blood transfusions. Uh, my wife receives them monthly uh, at Children's Hospital. We always like to joke that she's the oldest child at Children's Hospital when we go on Fridays for her blood transfusion. Uh, but we need folks uh, to continue to give blood, but not just give blood. We need folks, particularly in our black and brown community, to give blood as well. Just as we need blood, we also need diversity in that blood supply. So please sign up, uh, particularly our city employees. I want to thank uh, all the directors for encouraging our city employees uh, to give blood. Every time we have blood drives as a city, you guys knock it out of the park. Uh, lastly, next Tuesday, September 20th, my office will be holding a hearing to discuss potential changes to the Department of Development's wage threshold policy. Currently, companies wishing to enter into economic development deals with the city must pay at least $15 an hour for jobs that fall within the scope of the deal. This policy is up for review, and it has been determined that a higher wage for this threshold is necessary. The hearing occur occurring next Tuesday will give the Department of Development an opportunity to provide their recommendations on what the new wage threshold should be, as well as provide additional background regarding how the city enters into these deals. We hope the general public, community advocates, and stakeholders come away from this hearing with an even stronger understanding of how the city handles economic development and our economic development strategy. Uh, the hearing is set to begin at 6 p.m. and will take place at American Floor Source, located at 2360 City Gate Drive in Columbus, Ohio, 43219. And I also want to make sure I acknowledge uh, Council Member Brown uh, and her foresight and leadership, uh, because it was under uh, your leadership then that we got the $15 threshold codified in city code. So I want to thank you for that. Uh, and now we're at the three-year mark where we have to review it. And so we're looking forward to that discussion. Uh, Council President, that's all I have. Thank you, Council Member. Council Member Rosa de Padilla. Good evening, Council President. Uh, Welcome back to council. It's good to see a nice full house this evening. Um, I would be remiss before I started my uh, remarks and resolution um, to also, on a very personal level, send um, love out to uh, Donovan Lewis's family. They were a part of the Latino community and his mom is a good friend. And there are folks in this room who were close to her and uh, many Latino organizations that she supported and that are supporting her right now. So um, on a very human level, I want to send um, love and prayers out to the family. 
Um, and with that, if our speakers could start making their way over to the podium, I would like to introduce Resolution 0171X 2022 to recognize and celebrate September 15th, 2022 to October 15th, 2022 as Latine and Hispanic Heritage Month in the City of Columbus. Latine is a gender neutral term rooted in the Spanish language and more inclusive for native Spanish speakers. Originally celebrated as Hispanic Heritage Week in 1968, the celebration of Latine people and their many contributions to our country and communities across America became a full month celebration and was enacted into federal law in 1988. Celebrated between September 15th and October 15th to honor the independence days of many Latin American countries celebrated within this time frame. Latine and Hispanic people have had a lasting, have made a lasting impact on American history. We are writers, singers, and musicians that enrich our communities. We are entrepreneurs driving the economy. We are scientists and engineers revolutionizing our ways of life and making sweeping new discoveries. We are advocates leading the way for social and political change. And we are brave people in uniform who commit themselves to defending our most cherished ideals at home and abroad. The Latine people exemplify the tenacity and perseverance that is at the heart of our national character. And I'm excited to introduce three brief speakers this evening. Uh, Bridget Davila Gami, the president of the Peruvian Association at Ohio State University, student leader Rebecca Lozada, and Nora Yepes Ordenales, I'm gonna get my Latino card taken today, y'all, alumnus of the Latina Mentoring Academy. So with that, ladies, you have the floor. Thank you, Council President Hardin, Council Member Lourdes Barroso Padilla, and Council Members for your work to celebrate the people of Columbus and having me today. My name is Bridget Davila, and I'm here representing the Latinx population at The Ohio State University on behalf of my peers. Migrating here at the age of 11 from Peru, I never imagined that we would be represented given a place and a home to speak and be proud of our ancestors, our tongue, our music, our food, and it is an honor to be here today alongside you making history. Latinos make are the 6.32% of the Columbus population, making that 56.2 thousand of our population today, which is a lot. This month to me means to be orgullosa of my ancestors and of their hard work and of our land. I asked a few staff and students at OSU to tell me what, in one word, what this month means to them. And they said, unidad, pride, and inspiring. To this I say, thank you for the team of council members, Barroso de Padilla, for working tirelessly for the resolution to be presented and passed today. Thank you, Council President Hardin, Council Member Lourdes Barroso de Padilla, and the rest of council um, for having me today and for your endless advocacy towards an inclusive Columbus. My name is Rebecca Loaiza, and I'm a proud first-generation Peruvian American. Being Peruvian is my favorite part of myself. I have a rich culture full of good food, dances, traditions, and values. Growing up in America, I didn't have a lot of my close family with me. With my parents moving to the US, it strayed us away from my family in Peru. I realized growing up that living away from Peru didn't take, me, take my heritage or culture because it will always be a part of me. I learned to embrace my culture no matter the location. Living in Columbus, I found my Hispanic Latine community and that there are hundreds of other people that can relate to me and are in the same boat. To me, this month means community. It means that I can identify with other people by bonding over the similarities in our language, food, values, and traditions. Being Latina means I'm loud, proud, and not scared to be myself because I have my whole community with me, uplifting me because our culture is beautiful and deserving of celebration, not just this month, but every day. Y como dijo Bad Bunny, a los otros le falta sazón. Thank you. 
Good evening, everyone, and happy Monday. Um, I want, also want to thank the Columbus City Council for inviting us to speak today, and Council Member Barroso de Padilla um, for always amplifying our voices in our community. Uh, as a daughter of immigrants, my passion has always been to serve our Latina community, and it's always been a priority. Um, and I'm so honored to be a part of the inaugural Latina Hispanic Heritage Month Committee um, alongside folks who have also had the same passion to serve. Uh, and while many of us have different experience, we're all grounded by community. A community that celebrates each other's successes, that grieves losses together, and that always lends a helping hand when one of us is in need. Through our work, we hope to highlight Latinas in our community throughout Heritage Month starting off with a parade this Saturday in celebration of our rich cultures, um, a calendar of community events that empower us, and a forum that brings the Latina perspective and education to the forefront of the conversation. Um, and finally, a closing, a closing ceremony that will kick off Raices, an artist exhibit um, at Wild Goose Creative, and an ofrenda leading up to Dia de los Muertos, or de los Muertos to honor those that we have lost. Um, I'm gonna plug the social media handle <laughs> uh, for y'all to, to stay up to date to what we're doing. Um, so Instagram is at Latino Heritage Cibas. Um, again, I'm so honored to be a part of this committee and I invite everyone um, to come celebrate and honor our raices with us. Thank you. Thank you, wait, don't go anywhere. <laughs> stay right there. So um, with that, I open it to any comments from my colleagues. I just want to say congratulations. This is uh, such an amazing uh, accomplishment and such a big deal for our city. Um, I'm looking at you and I don't want to tear up because you are you tear up all the time. I do. And when people cry, it makes me cry. Uh, but I know how much uh, blood, sweat, and tears you put into this moment. And I could not be happier for your community. It's all of our community, but I know that representation matters. And to see someone that looks like you, not just on this dais, but walking down the streets of the city of Columbus is just gonna be such a powerful uh, representation for our young folks. And even for folks who have been here their entire lives and have never seen themselves in that capacity. So thank you, Council Member Barossa de Padilla. I'm so excited for you. And to the inaugural committee, congratulations on all of the hard work that you have done as well. Council Member, Council Member Favre stole my thunder. I just wanted to say thank you. Well, one, thank you, and thank you for your leadership. It is, I think, Council Member just said, long overdue uh, for folks to see themselves in this way. And so we, as a council, join uh, in celebrating the rich heritage and history um, of the Latino community in our city, but also are very grateful for the committee that worked really hard. And I know if, if Council Member Rosa de Padilla was leading it, y'all worked really hard. <laughs> Um, for the several events that we'll be playing, and we look forward to participating and celebrating along with you. Thank you. Uh, so with that, I move to admit, uh, amend as submitted to the clerk. Second. Move for adoption. Second. Clerk, please call the roll as amended. Banks, Den, Barosa, D. Padilla, Brown, Doran's favor, Remy, President Hardin. Now I move for adoption, sorry. Your second? Second. Clerk, please call the roll. Thanks, Den Barosa de Padilla, Brown, Doran's favor, Remy, President Hart. Adopted. One quick last announcement. We alluded to it, but in the um, in chambers today, we have about 20 or more uh, committee members that are part of the inaugural committee that are helping to plan the events throughout the month. So if those committee members could just stand for just a second, because they're really the ones who have been doing the work. Um, and I just want to make sure that we put in the plug. So we will be having the inaugural um, Latine Hispanic Heritage Month uh, parade and rally. We will start at Civic Center Drive and Rich Street, and it'll end here at um, City Hall. And we'll have a rally here at City Hall at the conclusion of the parade. We have over 30 organizations that are going to be joining us. So it's going to be fun. So come out. It's supposed to be a beautiful day. And lastly, tonight, 
the uh, City Hall will be illuminated in the colors of the Caribbean. Um, we might have had a personal connection. Uh, these are the, the flags of Puerto Rico, Cuba, and uh, the Dominican Republic. So it will be teal, red, and white. So um, with that, happy Latine Hispanic Heritage Month, mi gente. Thank you. President Pro Tem. Thank you, Council President. I just have a, a quick announcement that um, I, I'd like to thank residents who've taken the time to come out to my Meet Me at the Playground community hours. And uh, we have another one coming up uh, Saturday, September 24th from 10 to 11.30 a.m. at Marion Franklin Recreation Center. And we will announce our fall dates here shortly. Um, they're very casual. Uh, the conversation is often robust, but still casual, um, and I just encourage anyone, we do it this way so that parents can come and um, not have to choose between advocating for their community and finding fun diversions for their kids. They can do it all at once, but you don't have to be a parent to come out and enjoy um, the weather and our awesome Rec and Parks facilities and some good conversation. Thanks. Thank you, Press Pro Tem. Councilor Dorrance. Thank you, Council President. Uh, no resolutions tonight, but uh, this body did not meet, obviously, last Monday because it was Labor Day. Um, but I, so I wanted to take a quick moment here tonight to recognize uh, the historic amount of union organizing and, and labor activity that has happened here this summer. Uh, some have called this summer here in Columbus and across the country hot union summer, which uh, <laughs> sounds a little odd coming off my, my tongue, but uh, we're going to go with it. Uh, I also want to congratulate, there's literally a union that was born today. Here in, here in Columbus. Um, the Equality Ohio Workers United, the employees of Equality Ohio received voluntary recognition today from Equality Ohio, um, and their union was born. Um, and I want to shout out Equality Ohio's leadership. Uh, they voluntarily recognized their employees' union. They did not engage in any type of activity to lengthen the process or deny them their uh, federally protected rights to form a union. So they should be commended for doing the right thing and recognizing the workers. Uh, in addition to Quality Ohio Workers United, we've seen successful union drives from Starbucks Workers United, uh, Equitas Health Workers United. Uh, there are active worker organizing drives at the Columbus Museum of Art, Disability Rights of Ohio, and just outside of Columbus, the Grandview Heights Library workers and the, uh, the faculty at OSU at the Marion uh, branch. Uh, I believe these organizations should follow the lead of Equality Ohio and recognize their employees union and begin bargaining a contract. Even our Columbus Clippers have gotten into hot union summer uh, when the minor league baseball players moved to organize a union. And again, Major League Baseball had, to their credit, has also announced they will voluntarily recognize their union without imposing any delay. Uh, finally, I would be remiss if I didn't recognize the Columbus Education Association, who after going on strike, proved that there is in fact a power in a union and that power can lead to a better contract for both their workers and for the community at large. Oftentimes in Labor Day, we sit back and think about you know, battles of, of workers from you know, black and white you know, 19th and 20th century, um, you know, things like Blair Bouton and others, and forget that in the 21st century, there are workers right now that are risking everything to make their workplace and their community a better place. Uh, I hope that this continues here in our community and across the country. And as a proud union member myself, and I think all of my colleagues up there have either been a union member, have family in a union, uh, or certainly su support our folks in organized labor, uh, continue to stand with workers when they ask for our support in any way that we can give it. Uh, so as we've seen this record amount of activity, not only here in Columbus, but across the country, I felt it was important tonight to take a moment to recognize all of the work that has been happening by folks to make, again, their workplaces a fair, better place, and ultimately their communities as well. Thank you, Council President. Thank you, Council Member. Council Member Favor. Council Member Remy. All right, good evening. Thank you, Council President Harden. I have one resolution, a couple of announcements this evening. I would like to invite Isabella Gould and Carmine Russo up to the podium as I introduce Resolution 170X 2022 to recognize and celebrate the Neighborhood Design Center on their 40th anniversary of serving small businesses and communities in the city of Columbus. Whereas formerly known as the Neighborhood Design Assistance Center, the Neighborhood Design Center was established in 1982 by architect Bob Busser, 
From the very beginning, the City of Columbus and The Ohio State University were funding partners. NDC is committed to neighborhood revitalization through access to affordable professional design services. Historically, clients of community design centers are individuals and community groups working to revitalize economically distressed areas. The City of Columbus receives neighborhood commercial revitalization funds, which started in 1982 with the Short North and now includes other neighborhoods such as Franklinton, Hilltop, South Side, Near East Side, and Linden. Currently, the NDC offers free design services to eligible properties in seven commercial corridors in support of small businesses and community organizations. And Columbus City Council is thankful for the work and leadership of the Neighborhood Design Center over the last 40 years and looks forward to continuing this partnership for years to come. Be it resolved by this council of the City of Columbus that this council does hereby recognize and celebrate the Neighborhood Design Center on their 40th anniversary of serving small businesses and communities in Columbus, Ohio. Tonight, we're fortunate to have NDC Executive Director Isabel Bella Gould and NDC Board Chair Carmine Russell. Russo, excuse me. Thank you both for um, joining us this evening. The floor is yours. Thank you very much. Council President Hardin, Council, Council Member Remy, Council Members, and the rest of uh, City Council. Thank you very much for having us here today and for recognizing the Neighborhood Design Center's 40th anniversary. It is a great honor. Some of you may know who we are, but for those who do not, the Neighborhood Design Center is a 501c3 nonprofit organization. Incorporated in 1982, we have been serving communities in Columbus and Central Ohio with the belief that design is a right, not a privilege. Our work began in disinvested commercial corridors through the Neighborhood Commercial Revitalization Program, NCR for short, and Short North being a be the best example, by providing affordable design services to small businesses that needed storefront improvements. In the years since, we have expanded our mission to support urban revitalization by engaging, elevating, and empowering individuals and community organizations to dream big and shape visions for a more prosperous future. We have worked in many distressed neighborhoods on projects large and small, from streetscapes, block studies, pocket parks, public art, to competitions for vacant land, such as Parcel to Places and Next Home 2021. But perhaps what makes us most proud are the One Linden and Envision Hilltop plans, two of the largest and most comprehensive community plans undertaken in Columbus in recent years. Open, participatory, resident-driven, these plans have engaged thousands of community members through a bottom-up approach that was based on outreach, transparency, and inclusion. Most importantly, they made people believe that change is possible and have become lasting documents to guide future developments and investments for many more years to come. We are very grateful for the support the City of Columbus has given us throughout the years and remain committed to creating stronger communities in Columbus and Central Ohio. Thank you very much. Thank you, Isabella. Um, Councilman Remy, Council President Hardin, and the rest of City Council, uh, I wanted to express our sincere thanks on behalf of the Board of Directors at the Neighborhood Design Center on this notable recognition for the past 40 years of work. My name is Carmine Russo, and I'm the Board President leading our group of 17 members representing a wide array of business sectors. Over the past several years, we've been doing our best to diversify our group, uh, varying our backgrounds and areas of expertise to truly represent uh, the communities in which we serve. We have representatives from Columbus, City of Columbus, Director Mike Stevens of the Department of Development, and Director Carla William Scott, who I saw here in the audience at the Department of Neighborhoods, and Lucy Frank, uh, representing Councilman Remy's office. We also have Trudy Bartley representing Government Affairs at Ohio State, Matt Hansen from Campus Partners in Planning Architecture and Real Estate, and representatives from the Knowlton School at The Ohio State University. There are also a few design professionals like myself, Leah Evans for representing Homeport, Carrie Charles from NBC4, Jenny Snap from Franklin County, and a host of others. I'm just trying to give you a snapshot here. I can name them all, but uh, we also had the pleasure of working with uh, Councilman Bankston before he took another important job here this year. Um, but I say all that to illustrate that our board, we all come from different backgrounds and different experiences, and we have different expertise to offer but we're all united under one common purpose, and that is creating stronger communities in our city and our region. 
I like to use the tagline, as Isabella already mentioned, design is a right and not a privilege, that access to good and more thoughtful design solutions should not be just for the select few, but that access to affordable design is for the betterment of all. We have the ability to design a better built environment in our city with access to more parks, green spaces, and inclusion of more public spaces in our neighborhoods that brings people together and enhance the quality of life for all residents. This is the mission of the NDC and the thing that keeps us all on the board motivated to serve the team that Isabella leads and to continue to build on the foundation that they've built over the past 40 years. So in closing, I'd like to thank you all again for recognizing this important moment in the Neighborhood Design Center's history and the important work that they do in the service of this community. And I look forward to the continu continuing the efforts in the groundwork that they've laid for the past 40 years in creating stronger communities for the city of Columbus and in central Ohio. Thank you all again. Thank you both. We appreciate the work that you've been doing throughout our, our community over the past 40 years and like love our partnership and, and the ability to help drive um, this type of work in areas of need and certainly for small businesses that need uh, work um, that wouldn't be able to afford, afford it otherwise. Are there any um, comments from my colleagues this evening? Councilmember Bankston. Yeah, I just want to be brief and say congratulations. Um, I miss sitting at the table with you guys, uh, but we'll always be a champion because what we're celebrating today is not just a consulting team or just another nonprofit in our community, but you guys truly are a partner to the city uh, and the work that we do. And not only want to thank you for the idea that design is a, a right uh, and, and not a privilege, uh, understanding that our neighborhoods uh, and design and urban design and land use all of those are intentional, intentional things. And everyone in our community, regardless of their zip code, deserves to live in a neighborhood that has been thought out, um, that has a sense of community and pride. Um, and want to thank you for that, but also want to thank you not just for the design that you do, but for your advocacy, for always having the tough conversations, for always engaging uh, with the community. And last but not least, it's not just theoretical things that are happening at the Neighborhood Design Center. It's also implementation. And so there are projects out of that one Linden plan, out of the Envision Hilltop plan that you guys have not only planned, but helped to implement. So thank you so much uh, for your advocacy and your continued leadership uh, in our community. I also want to make sure I think, because she's not standing up here, she's always in the behind the scenes, but Lisa Snyder, who is a part of the team, who's here as well, and give her a shout out. But congratulations. Thank you very much, Councilman Member Bankston. I know Director William Scott, you wanted to say a couple of words? Thank you, Councilmember Remy, and I just want to say it is a pleasure to work with uh, the team at NDC for helping our residents to dream and see what can be in their communities in both Linden and Hilltop. And I wouldn't be a good member, board member if I didn't put out a shameless plug to have you join us at the open house uh, this Thursday at 430 at NDC so you can learn more about uh, Neighborhood Design Center and how you can support us. Thank you. Thank you. Seeing no further uh, comments, I would like to move for adoption. Clerk, please call the row. Mr. Bankston. Oh, yeah. Yes. Ms. Burroughs de Padilla. Yes. Ms. Brown. Yes. Mr. Dorans. Yes. Ms. Faber. Abstain. Mr. Remy. Yes. President Harden. Yes, adopt it. Thank you very much. Now a couple of announcements to compliment uh, Councilmember Barosa de Padilla. I'd like to recognize and celebrate that this week is also National Welcoming Week. Welcoming Week is an annual celebration bringing together thousands of people across the country in a series of local events that celebrate the contributions of immigrants, refugees, and new Americans and the role our communities play in fostering a greater welcome. Fostering a welcoming environment for all individuals, regardless of race, ethnicity, or a place of origin, enhances the cultural fabric, economic growth, global competitiveness, and overall prosperity for current and future generations in the city of Columbus.
to help celebrate Welcoming Columbus, or excuse me, Welcoming Week 2022 in Columbus, and to highlight the work of a wonderful local organization. I encourage everyone to attend Elevate Northland's annual Northland Unity Festival this Saturday, September 17th from 3 to 7 at the North YMCA. Elevate Northland hosts this festival to bring people together to share in culture, food, and entertainment. In honor of the 2022 Welcoming Week theme, Creating Spaces That Foster Belonging, I commend Elevate Northland on their work with the Northland Unity Festival. Second, I will be hosting my September community hours on Monday, September 26th from 12 to 1.30 virtual, uh, virtually on WebEx. This is a great opportunity to come and share issues, ideas, and questions with me and my team. All are welcome to RSVP. Please email my legislative assistant, Lucy Frank, at ljfrank at columbus.gov. Thank you, Council President. That's all I have this evening. Thank you, Council Member. Um, just one other thing, I, no, I was noticed that our new uh, fall interns for city council are in council chambers. If they would just stand and wave, is council interns here? This is their first day, so if they are shy, uh, that is why. Welcome to council. Uh, are there any comments by our elected officials? Seeing none, are there any requests by members of council for the removal of an ordinance uh, from the consent action portion of the agenda? Seeing none, may we now have a motion to waive reading type of titles of 30-day legislation? Is there a second? second? Clerk, please call the roll. Banks, Den, Barosa, Di Padilla, Brown, Dorrance, Favor, Remy, President Harden. Thank you. Will the clerk now read into the record ordinance numbers of 30-day legislation on tonight's agenda? Economic Development Committee, Ordinance 2271-2022. Technology Committee, Ordinance 1986-2022. Public Service and Transportation Committee, Ordinance 2194, 2405-2420-2022. Education Committee, Ordinances 2274 and 2275-2022. Public Utilities Committee, Ordinances 2178, 2185, 2203, 2212, 2242, 2273, 2321, 2324, 2362 2022. Criminal Justice and Judiciary Committee, Ordinance 2317 2022. Health and Human Services Committee, Ordinance 2439 2022. Zoning Committee, Ordinances 2366, 2367, 2382, 2432, 24. 37-2022. Thank you, Madam Clerk. We don't have any speakers on the first reading. Uh, the following ordinance appear on our agenda as consent. Will the clerk read those into the record? Resolution of Expression 172X-2022, Economic Development Committee, Resolution 161X-2022, Ordinances 2372, 2384, 2445-2022, Small and Minority Business Committee, Ordinance 2397-2022, Technology Committee, Ordinances 2196 and 2331-2022, Public Service and Transportation Committee, Ordinances 2195, 2253, 2280, 2326, 2332, 2333-2340-2353, 2359, 2360, 2373, 2391, 2394, and 2395-2022, 2243, 2250, 2261, 2355, 2356, and 2370 2022. Recreation and Parks Committee, ordinances 1611, 2163, 2167, 2319 2022. Public Utilities Committee, ordinances 2156, 2162, 2231, 2262, 2295, 2323. 2328, 2354-2022, Building and Zoning Policy Committee, Ordinance 2249-2022, Housing Committee, Ordinances 2267, 2268, 2269, 2278, 2280, 2285, 2361, 2390, 2425, 2426, 2022, Criminal Justice and Judiciary Committee, Ordinances 2337, 
2022 Health and Human Services Committee Ordinances 2244, 2245, 2247, 2248, 2252, 2276, 2332, 2334, and 2388-2022 2022 Public Safety Committee Ordinances 2030, 2265, 2281, 2327, 2329, 2338, 2341, 2344, 2345, 2352, and 2468 2022. Administration Committee Ordinances 2294 and 2422 2022. Appointments from the Mayor's Office numbered A0165, 166, 167, 168, 169, 170, 171, 172, 173, 174, 175, 176, 177, 178, 179, 180, 181, 182, 183, 184, 185, 187, and 188 2022. Thank you, Madam Clerk. We have two speakers on uh, the consent portion of the agenda. The first speaker uh, uh, is Mr. Nate Wilkins speaking uh, on ordinance number 2426. Mr. Wilkins, welcome back to council. Sixteen twelve Arlington Avenue, Mr. Lathan George Wilkins. Um, I'm not going to speak for this or against this, but there's a several questions I need to know. In South Linden, you had a property stood idolized and vacant for several years of 1511, 1515. Also, with the other property of 1504 Cleveland Avenue. I come down here time after time on the bus line or have an a driver drive me along Cleveland Avenue going past um, North Linden, South Linden. I'm the, I'm the only person that comes down here. And to tell you, if we are going to do something with vacant land that the city had owned for decades and time after time again, I come to you all the time on the bus line. And still today, there's torn up property in danger, danger signs. 15. 15 Cleveland Avenue. This property has sit like this. I've been in my house for 15 years on the bus line before the bus service has changed. This house was not occupied at the time, but it has sit, torn up, and repair it for a sell sign. And here, to come to you and see this in the land bank, stuff like this in the land bank needs to move quickly in a timely fashion to create jobs. I come here every time to see vacant land. If I want something to be put in this lot, it can be something useful and a liability. We talk about affordable housing all the time. Everything has went up in the store, groceries and all this other stuff. If I want something in this lot, I want something that's viable that people can afford. Not There's two churches that sit along this lot here. And I don't want to see no empty lots. I want to see something that's viable to a young person, to a multi-disability person. I'm tired of seeing a land bank that sit idolized and empty to this day. Even though North Linden has a Moby place that's going up, I'm grateful to have that. But for me, as a resident of North Linden, to come down here all the time and cry about this, I don't see no seats that's occupied with North Linden or South Linden with this. I'm the only person that comes down here all the time and cry to you. These houses could have been saved and used for low-income, affordable houses under $500. And this is what I don't see in my neighborhood. I'm not part of South Linden, but I want to work with all of y'all since downtown development in Linden is getting developed. I want to see some type of housing that people can afford young professionals, young mothers and fathers, people that's getting out of jail. Here the other day, I went to a CODA meeting and surprised you, I'm gonna tell you how the city works. This new jailhouse, this bus serves seven days a week, but here we can't get affordable housing in the state of Ohio here. I, uh, just tell me why. And I want to know what's gonna be done with these two lots. I don't wanna see no vacant lots. I don't wanna see 
a church parking lot, I want to see something that's liability for my community in South Florida. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Mr. Wilkins. Director, would you speak on Ordinance 2426, please? Sure. Thank you, President Harden. Um, well, uh, we have been actually working with the adjacent church for it to be an extension of their parking lot. Um, we have had the properties for sale since 2021. It has been a process due to foreclosure to get both of them. Um, and the delay has been that the church had to apply for zoning. It just passed BZA as of August of this year. So we are now just finalizing the sale that was contingent on the zoning action that the church had to take. Thank you, Director. But certainly, Mr. Wilkins, your larger point around more affordable housing, specifically in the North and South Linden area, is well taken by this council. Um, and thus, we appreciate your, your continued advocacy. Uh, the next speaker to come before council is uh, Mr. Joe Motil. Joe Motil, 167 West Cook Road, uh, President Harden, Pro Tem Brown, members of council. This land bank property that you are allowing to be sold as a side yard expansion sits almost directly across the street from Camp Shameless. Three properties to the west of Camp Shameless sits a 15 room, six bedroom home that is owned and operated by the Friends of the Homeless. The two properties next to it are two vacant 4,000 square foot apartment buildings owned by Children's Hospital and across the street, Children's also owns and rents out a 4,900 square foot apartment building. To the immediate east of Camp Shameless sits a good sized community garden. When this land bank property is sold, it will allow the owner to eventually request variances to combine both lots into a larger development, possibly for a tax abated multi-unit or $500,000 home. The city of Columbus has been sitting on the Camp Shameless property for 15 years now with no plan. Our homeless population is increasing by the day due to never ending evictions caused by out of control and justified monthly rent increases by greedy landlords. So rather than chastise homeless advocates in meetings on their methods of getting their message across while they are presenting heartfelt solutions and proposals, maybe it's about time our mayor and the city council take the lead on creating policy for transitional housing at Camp Shameless for our homeless citizens, along with removing the issue of homelessness from the Dep Department of Development to more appropriately, the Department of Health, put an end to camp sweeps, fund overnight warming centers during cold nights and more. Giving away millions of taxpayer dollars to various nonprofits that are supposed to be addressing our homeless population needs and then washing your hands of the problem is insufficient. And when the city council and mayor hands out $875,000 in CDBG funds for three luxury restrooms for downtown Columbus and won't even provide Porta Johns or 10 yard dumpsters for a homeless camp and then file a complaint about sanitation issues demonstrates further disregard for interim solutions. And then there is the disgrace of a city official referring to nonviolent acts of civil disobedience as, quote, political theater and political stunts. When others and I had to resort to such actions to get arrested due to the city's policy of its bulldozer diplomacy for remediating homeless camps and ignoring the request of homeless advocates for better solutions. And maybe those city officials would also regard counter sit-ins during the civil rights area as political theater. The true political theater is the comedy of errors that occur here nearly every Monday by giving rich developers tax abatements in affluent neighborhoods that defund public education and results in teacher striking for better educational needs for our children. It is time the city utilized the Camp Shameless property as a tiny homes transitional housing site for our city's homeless. This location would be in close proximity to his residence, health resources, and employment opportunities. But the question is, does our mayor and the city council have the wherewithal to go forward with such a project, or will you both cave in to the pressure and future development plans of nearby Children's Hospital in what will most likely be the impending gentrification of this Camp Shameless surrounding neighborhood? Thank you. Glad to answer any questions. My colleagues have any questions uh, for uh, Mr. Motil. Okay, thank you. Director, uh, on the uh, status of um, uh, working with the, uh, the citizens at the uh, encampment, is there are there updates that you can provide to council and the community at this time? 
Sure. Uh, we began working with residents today. Uh, 12 of 13 individuals who are at the camp have chosen to engage with outreach um, and work with us on piloting a program that will look at providing transitional housing opportunities for folks while they're working to secure long-term housing. So we're coordinating with CSB and Equitas to do detailed case management um, to ensure that we're providing wraparound services so that we're taking folks out of situations where they may be under a lot of stress and not able to focus on securing housing um, and putting them in an environment where they have the ability to focus on that. So we are very excited at the level of engagement. It's one of the reasons um, that outreach really pushed us to look at the residents at this camp um, because they have been very active and engaged and we look forward to coming back to you to share how that goes. And I also would like to recognize the work of Council Member Favor um, on behalf of Council uh, as Housing Chair. We do believe that you know, the moving folks who are in encampment is the most delicate thing that you can do. Um, you're talking about folks who um, are, are looking and needing uh, extra support, um, and it's how you do it, um, not if what, why or how you do it or, or if you do it. So um, we're we're. Glad to hear that so many of, uh, of the, the residents there have, are taking the, the support, um, but look forward to a larger conversation around a larger policy, and I know that those conversations are underway. Are there any other questions or comments about the consent portion of the agenda? Seeing none, may I have a motion for approval by voice? Sorry. Clerk, please call the roll by voice. Mr. Bankston? Yes, with the exception of 21... 62 and 2030 2022, from which I'm abstaining. Ms. Barossa de Padilla? Yes. Ms. Brown? Yes, with the exceptions of 2468 and A0181, on which I'm abstaining. Mr. Dorrance? Yes. Ms. Favor? Yes, with the exceptions of ordinances 2085 and 2329 22 and appointments A0167-2022, 170, 171, 172, 173, 174, 175, 176, 177, 178, 179, 180, 181, 182, 183, 184, 185, and 187, for which I'm abstaining. Mr. Remy? Yes. President Harden. Yes, consent agenda is carried with uh, noted exceptions. We'll now proceed with the second reading of 30 day and table emergency legislation. The first committee to come before council is the Technology Committee, chaired by Councilmember Bankston. Councilmember, the floor is yours. Thank you, uh, Council President. Just one ordinance for second reading this evening in the Technology Committee Ordinance 2343 2022 to appropriate $1,033,000. Million, $1 million $1,033,000 within the Special Income Tax Fund to authorize the Director of Finance and Management on behalf of the Department of Technology and various city agencies to associate all general budget rev uh, reservations resulting from this ordinance with the appropriate universal term contract slash purchase agreement for the purchase of new and replacement desktop computers, computer-related products, and equipment from two pre- uh, establish universal term contracts slash purchase agreements with Brown Enterprise Solutions LLC and the and Law and Order Technology LLC to authorize the expenditure of one million thirty three thousand dollars from the Special Income Tax Fund for the above stated purpose to authorize the expenditure of two hundred sixty five thousand dollars from the Department of Technology Information Services Operating Fund for the above stated purpose and to declare an emergency. Uh, this ordinance authorizes the appropriation and expenditure of a total of $1,298,000 to pay for the city's annual computer replacement procurement. Emergency legislation is requested to facilitate prompt acquisition of the above described equipment authorized by this ordinance in order to maintain the supply of updated computers critical to the daily operations of city agencies. Any questions or comments from our colleagues? Seeing none, I move for passage. Clerk, please call the roll. Bankston, Barossa de Padilla, Brown, Dorrance, Favor, Remy, President Harden. Pass. Thank you. That's all I have in my committees this evening. Thank you, Chair. Next committee to come before counseling, 
Council is the Housing Committee, chaired by Councilmember Favor. Floor is yours. Thank you, Council President Harden, and I'm going to turn it over to President Pro Tim Brown. Uh, thank you so much, Council Member Favor. Um, tonight in uh, housing, um, I am putting forth Ordinance 2279-2022 to authorize the City Attorney to modify an existing contract with Columbus Next Generation Corporation to authorize an appropriation and an expenditure within the general fund and to declare an emergency. Access to housing is one of the most important factors in residents' quality of life. Even when you think about the diverse needs that someone who's fallen on hard times might have, any and all of them are easier to solve to address when the person is safely housed first. This ordinance contains a partnership between, uh, among the city, the Franklin County Environmental Court, City Attorney Klein's office, and Columbus Next Generation Corporation to help older or disabled homeowners with limited incomes to maintain their housing by addressing code violations on their properties. When the cost of remedying code violations exceeds residents' ability to pay, they risk losing their homes altogether. But through this partnership, we're able to help residents bring their homes back up to code and have a success, successful exit from environmental court. In doing so, we avoid the displacement of vulnerable residents and protect the fabric of the neighborhoods in which they reside. NextGen works with local contractors and encourages participation of minority firms as much as possible in the process of helping residents make these needed repairs. Those repairs range from roof repair to new roofs, uh, gutters, painting, sewer line work, porch or foundation work, cutting down dead trees or overgrown high weeds, branches, and grass. And then once repairs are complete, NextGen contacts the city code officer who referred properties to environmental court to make sure the repairs meet those requirements and then to close out the current code violations. I want to acknowledge City Attorney Klein for really jump-starting this effort. Um, in July 2020, his office requested and received grant money in the amount of $100,000 to start this program to provide home repairs to address code violations, and it's upon that initial work that we are building this ordinance. So today, I'm thrilled to share that this legislation is an extension of the original contract through de December 31st, 2023, um, expands the terms to include interior repairs, and it also increases the available funding by $250,000 from the general fund and permits minor administrative changes as well. We are requesting emergency action in order to avoid any disruption in the current home repair program as the original contract expires in just a couple weeks on September 22nd. Are there any questions or comments from colleagues? Thank you so much, and I move for passage by voice. Clerk, please call the roll by voice. Mr. Bankston? Yes. Ms. Barosa de Padilla? Yes. Ms. Brown? Yes. Mr. Dorans? Yes. Ms. Faber? Mr. Remy, yes. President Harden. Yes, ordinance is passed. I uh, turn the microphone back to Housing Chair Favor. Thank you, President Pro Tem Brown. Excuse me. Uh, next, we have Ordinance 2398-2022 to authorize the Director of Development to modify a nonprofit service agreement with Impact Community Action Agency to add up to $9.5 million of federal emergency rental assistance, one or ERA one funds, and to reclassify the type of agreement from nonprofit service agreement to subaward grant agreement to authorize the expenditure of up to $9.5 million from the federal emergency rental assistance fund and to declare an emergency. This ordinance modifies a nonprofit service agreement with impact community action to add up to $9.5 million in emergency rental assistance funds to support their efforts in providing emergency rental assistance, rental and utility assist assistance, supportive services, and targeted outreach to residents that have not yet had access to emergency rental assistance programs. Impact has successfully deployed $10.8 million in Columbus CARES Act funding, $10 million of ERA-1 funding, and nearly $2.5 million of ERA-2 funding to our community by providing rental, mortgage, and utility assistance to Central Ohio residents. The collective power of partners like Impact have supported thousands of Columbus residents by keeping them housed. I want to sincerely thank the team at Impact for their partnership and the work they continue to do on behalf of residents in Columbus. Uh, Director Jones, do you have any additional comments you'd like to add at this time? 
No, thank you. All right. Are there any questions or comments by my colleagues? Well, Director, if, if anyone should need some help locating yes. those funds, Absolutely. where do they go? Uh, they can contact IMPACT directly by phone at 614-964-2906 to schedule an appointment. They can also go to our website, which highlights all the organizations who currently are receiving our assistance, which is rentful, R-E-N-T-F-U-L, 614 Dot com. I also encourage folks to check out IMPACT's website as they run a number of satellite offices and clinics around the city for those who can't get to them. Thank you, Director. Any questions or comments by my colleagues? Yes, Council I President. Mean, I think that it, it, you really can't shout out or uh, applaud uh, IMPACT enough uh, mm -hmm. for what they did over the last two years. Uh, um, we were the pass-through to give them tens of millions of dollars to serve thousands of our residents, and I think they did so. Um, in a very admirable way, and so um, we're able. I'm glad we're able to extend the next stage of this uh, support. You're absolutely correct. And uh, impacts will be back at the courthouse. Is that correct? Yes, beginning October 3rd, they will begin having providers there again. Thank you. Uh, with that, I move for passage. Clerk, please call the roll. Mr. Bankston. Yes. Ms. Barosa de Padilla. Yes. Ms. Brown. Yes. Mr. Dorans. Yes. Ms. Faber? Yes. Mr. Remy? Yes. President Hart? Yes. Ordinance passed. Thank you. May I move on to criminal justice? Please. Tonight in criminal justice and judiciary, we have Ordinance 2246-2022 to authorize the, the municipal court clerk to modify the contract with IT partners for data storage services for the Franklin County Municipal Court to waive the competitive bidding provisions of city code to authorize the expenditure of $6,789 from the Municipal Court Computer Fund and to declare an emergency. The, this ordinance authorizes the Franklin County Municipal Court Clerk of Court to modify the contract with IT Partners Plus for additional storage services for the Franklin County Municipal Court. These services are needed to establish a Microsoft 365 backup system for specified data. Are there any questions or comments by my colleagues? Seeing none, I move for passage. Clerk, please call the roll. Bankston, Barosa de Padilla, Brown, Dorrance, Favor, Remy, President Hardin. Passed. Thank you. Next, we have Ordinance 2316-2022 to authorize and direct the administrative presiding judge of the Franklin County Municipal Court to enter into contract with Court View Justice System to create an interface between Court View and the OCSS system, maintenance and setup, to authorize the expenditure of up to $76,262 to waive the competitive bidding provisions of the Columbus City Codes and to declare an emergency. The Ohio Community Supervision System is an automated shared case management software application developed to allow Ohio probation and parole agencies involved in the supervision of defendants and defenders the ability to access the same information. The implementation of the OCSS interface will assist the court to improve workflow by utilizing technology and reducing staff time Rekeying date and scanning documents into both systems, minimizing the delay in communication. These systems will be used by the court's probation department, specialized docket courts, and the environmental court. Are there any questions or concerns by my colleagues? Seeing none, I move for passage. Clerk, please call the roll. Bankston, Barossa de Padilla, Brown, Dorans, Favor, Remy, President Harden. Passed. Thank you. May I move on to Health and Human Services? Please. Uh, in Health and Human Services, we have Ordinance 2211-2022 to authorize and direct the Board of Health to accept grant funds from the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services in the amount of $1.2 million and any additional funds for the Implementing Enhanced HIV P and S for the Health Department's grant program. To authorize the appropriation of $1.2 million and any additional funds from the unappropriated balance of the Health Department Grants Fund. To authorize the city auditor to transfer appropriations between object classes for the implementing enhanced P and S Health Department's grant program and to declare an emergency. Columbus Public Health has been awarded a grant from the Ohio Department of Health to fund the implementing enhanced HIV prevention and surveillance for health departments to end the HIV epidemic in Ohio grant program. The purpose of this grant is to create disruptive innovation by seeking to prevent new HIV infections by focusing on four pillars, treating HIV to achieve viral suppression, diagnose HIV so that all persons know their HIV status, prevent infections through PrEP and syringe support programs, and respond to HIV clusters or outbreaks within the community. 
Columbus Public Health, in partnership with community leaders, developed a strategic plan to reduce the number of people living with HIV by 75% in five years and 90% in 10 years. The grant specifically focuses on the diagnose and prevent pillars. Are there any questions or comments by my colleagues? Seeing that, at move for passage. Clerk, please call the roll. Bankston, Barosa de Padilla, Brown, Dorrance, Favor, Remy, President Arden. Pass. Thank you. Next, we have Ordinance 2229-2022 to authorize and direct the Board of Health to accept a grant from the Ohio Department of Health for the Women, Infants, and Children program and the amount of $6,353,674 to authorize the appropriation of $6,353,674 from the unappropriated balance of the Health Department Grants Fund and to declare an emergency. Columbus Public Health has been awarded a grant from the Ohio Department of Health. This ordinance is needed to accept and appropriate the balance to fund the Women, Infants, and Children Grant Program for the period of October 1st, 2022 through September 30th, 2023. The primary objective of the Women, Infants, and Children program is to provide nutritionally desirable food and nutrition education to pregnant and lactating women, infants, and children at nutritional risk in Franklin County who meet categorical income and nutritional risk requirements for eligibility. Are there any questions or comments by my colleagues? Seeing none, I move for passage. Clerk, please call the roll. Bankston, Barosa de Padilla, Brown, Dorrance, Favor, Remy, President Harden. Passed. Thank you. That's all I have in my committees. Thank you, Madam Chairman. Is there seeing no further business become for council? Is there a motion to adjourn? Clerk, please call the roll. Bankston, Barosa de Padilla, Brown, Dorrance, Favor, Remy, President Harden. Meeting is adjourned. We have uh, several non agenda speakers.
that's what it was. Regular meeting number 14 will now come to order. Clerk, please call the roll. Bankston, Barossa de Padilla, Brown, Doran's favor, Remy, President Harden. Can I get a motion to dispense with the reading of the journal? Clerk, please call the roll. Bankston, Barossa de Padilla, Brown, Doran's favor, Remy, President Harden. Are there any additions or corrections to the journal? Seeing none, the journal is approved. We'll now go to the zoning committee. Councilmember Dorrance chairs that committee and all members serve on it. Councilmember, the floor is yours. Thank you, Council President. Before beginning tonight's zoning agenda, uh, a little bit of housekeeping. Will the clerk please read the numbers of legislation in the zoning committee this evening that requires waiver of second reading? 2325 2022, 2380, 2392, 2401, 2326, 2378, 2386, 2387, and 2393 2022. Thank you. Uh, I now move to waive uh, second reading on those items read. Clark, please call the roll. Bankston, Barossa de Padilla, Brown, Doran's favor, Remy, President Harden. Thank you. Uh, now, before we get to the rest of the zoning agenda this evening, allow me to briefly explain our current rules pertaining to speak before council on rezoning and variances. Uh, we'll only hear staff presentations for ordinances that have disapproval from a recommending body or if we have a public speaker signed up to speak it against an ordinance. Uh, tonight, we have no speaker slips and unanimous approval uh, on all our a piece of legislation. Uh, all speakers on council variances, including city staff, area commission applicants, and members of the public will be sworn in before they give testimony. Representative and area commission applicants are always able to speak on an ordinance and do not need to fill out a speaker slip. On the advice of the city attorney's office, I will now swear in the city staff. Please stand. Uh, repeat after me. Do you swear or affirm that testimony you're about to give shall be the truth and nothing but the truth as you shall answer under the pains or penalties of perjury? If so, please say I do. Thank you. Let the record reflect that Tim Dietrich from the Department of Building and Zoning Services and Dan Bleschmidt from the Department of Public Service have been sworn in. Uh, first, we have uh, rezoning uh, slash amendments number 2325-2022 to amend ordinance 1895-2022 to pass July 11, 2022, property located at 840 Michigan Avenue to repeal section one and replace it with new section one to correct the building setback variance for proposed apartment building. This is an ordinance amendment. The city hall, city department's recommendation is approval. The Harrison West recommendation is approval 10-1. If there are any questions from my colleagues, seeing none, I move for passage. Second. Clerk, please call the roll. Bankston, Barossa de Padilla, Brown, Doran's favor, Remy, President Harden. Gosh. Next we have um, ordinance 2380-2022 to rezone 2045 Reeve Avenue being point, point 0.15 plus acres located in the southwest corner of Reeve Avenue and south, south 8th, 8th Street from CPD Commercial Planning Development District to uh, R2F Residential District. The applicant is Healthy Homes LLC, uh, care of Elizabeth uh, Seraph, attorney. The pro proposed use is a two unit residential development. Pro the city department recommendation is approval. The development commission's recommendation is approval 5 0. Columbus Southside Air Commission recommendation is approval 9 0. Do my colleagues have any questions or comments? Seeing none, I move for passage. Clerk, please call the roll. Bankston, Barossa de Padilla, Brown, Doran's favor, Remy, President Harden. Passed. Thank you. Next, we have Ordinance 2392-2022 to rezone 1549 Freebus Avenue, being 1.36 plus acres located in the south side of Freebus Ave, uh, 135 plus feet east of Fairwood Ave. From C3 Commercial District to LM Limited Manufacturing District, the applicant is Ohio One Development LLC. Uh, care of Connie uh, Clemma, attorney, proposed use is storage uses. The city's department recommendation is approval. Development commission recommendation is approval 6-0. Columbus South Side Air Commission recommendation it, oh, it, uh, is approval 11-0. Do Don't my colleagues have questions or comments? Seeing none, I move for passage. Clerk, please call the roll. Bankston, Barossa de Padilla, Brown, Doran's favor, Remy, President Harden. Passed. Next, we have rezoning 2401-2022 to amend ordinance number 0 um, 0510-2022, past February 28, 2022, for the property located at 3730 West Dublin Granville Road by repealing Section 3 and replacing it with the new Section 3, thereby modifying the CPD sign, uh, signage requirements. Uh, this is an or ordinance amendment. The proposed use is... Um, uh, the, the proposed use is, a, is an amendment. Uh, the city's department recommendation is approval. The Far Northwest Coalition recommendation is approval 2-0. Uh, do my colleagues have any questions or comments? Seeing none, I move for passage. Clerk, please call the roll. Bankston, Barossa de Padilla, Brown, Doran's favor, Remy, President Harden. Passed. Thank you. Next, we move into the Council Variances portion of the committee. First, we have Variance 2326-2022 uh, to grant a variance provisions of Section 
3.03 R1 Residential District 3312.49 Minimum Number of Parking Space Required at Columbus City Codes for the property located at 4171 Mays Road to permit a shared living uh, facility for eight occupants with reduced parking in the R1 Residential District. The applicant is Suleiman Farr, uh, care of Nugu. Um, the proposed use is a shared use living facility. The city's department recommendation is approval. The Northland Community Council's recommendation is approval 1511. Um, do any of my colleagues have any questions or comments? Seeing none, I first move to accept the entire staff report into evidence as an exhibit. Second. Clerk, please call the row. Bankston, Burroughs, Adi Padilla, Brown, Dorrance, Favor, Remy, President Arden. Accept it. Next, I move to adopt the findings of staff as the findings of council. Clerk, please call the row. Bankston, Burroughs, Adi Padilla, Brown, Dorrance, Favor, Remy, President Harden. Adopt it. Finally, I move for passage. Second. Clerk, please call the row. Bankston, Burroughs, Adi Padilla, Brown, Dorrance, Favor, Remy, President Harden. Passed. Next, we have variance uh, 2378-2022 to grant advance provisions of section 3333.03 AR3 apartment residential district use 3312.21A landscaping and screening 3312.733 Parking setback line 3312.49, minimum number of spark parking spaces required 3321.05A1, B2, vision clearance 3321.07B, uh, landscaping 3333.15C, basis of computing area and 3333.18 building lines of Columbus City Coast, the property located at 986 Cleveland Avenue to permit a mixed use development with reduced development standards in the AR3 apartment residential district and repeal ordinance number 18. Um, 98-2021, uh, past July 26, 2021. The applicant is uh, 5... 5CL Properties LLC, care of uh, Dave Perry agent. The proposed use and mixed use development. C's department recommendation is approval. Milo Grogan, Area Commission's recommendation is approval 10-1. Don't my cog some questions or comments? Seeing none, I first move to accept the entire staff report into evidence as an exhibit. Second. Clerk, please call the roll. Bankston, Burroughs, Adi Padilla, Brown, Dorrance, Favor, Remy, President Harden. Accept it. Next, I move to adopt the findings of staff, the findings of council. Second. Clerk, please call the roll. Bankston, Barosa de Padilla, Brown, Dorrance, Favor, Remy, President Harden. Adopt it. Finally, I move for passage. Clerk, please call the roll. Bankston, Barosa de Padilla, Brown, Dorrance, Favor, Remy, President Harden. Passed. Next, we have uh, variance 2386-2022 to grant variance provisions of section 3332.035. R3 permitted uses 3332.05 area lot width requirements, 3332.13 R3 area district requirements, 3332.18 D basis of computing area, 3332.19 fronting, 3332.27 rear yard, and 3332.26 uh, side or rear yard obstruction of Columbus City Codes, a property located at 1105 East Rich Street uh, to permit two single unit dwellings on the same lot with reduced development standards in the R3 residential district. The applicant is Jeffrey Steele. Proposed, proposed use is a two unit dwelling on one lot. The city's department recommendation is approval. The Near East Area Commission recommendation is approval 804. Do my colleagues have any questions or comments? Seeing none, I move to accept the entire staff reports uh, into evidence as an exhibit. Clerk, please call the roll. Bankston, Barosa de Padilla, Brown, Dorrance, Favor, Remy, President Harden. Accept it. Next, I move to adopt the findings of staff as the findings of council. Second. Clerk, please call the roll. Bankston, Barosa de Padilla, Brown, Dorrance, Favor, Remy, President Harden. Adopt it. And finally, I move for passage. Second. Clerk, please call the roll. Bankston, Barosa de Padilla, Brown, Dorrance, Favor, <coughs> Remy, President Harden. Passed. Next, we have variance 2387-2022 to grant a variance provisions of section 3332.037 R2F residential district 3312.49C minimum number of parking spaces required 3332.05A4 area district lot width requirements 3332.14 R2F area district requirements 3332.26C1 minimum side yard permitted 3332.27 rear uh, Rear yard of the Columbus City Coast, a property located at 741 South 17th Street, uh, to permit two single unit dwellings on the same lot and two, two uh, unit dwellings on a new lot with reduced development standards in the R2F residential district. Uh, the applicant is Abdullah Habshe. Uh, the proposed use is a residential development. The city's department recommendation is approval. Columbus Southside Area Commission's uh, recommendation is approval 11 0. Do my colleagues have any questions or comments? Seeing none, I move to entire. I move to accept the entire staff report. New evidence as an exhibit. Second. Clerk, please call the roll. Bankston, Burroughs, Adi Padilla, Brown, Dorrance, Favor, Remy, President Harden. Accept it. Next, I move to adopt the findings of staff. The findings of council. Second. Clerk, please call the roll. Bankston, Burroughs, Adi Padilla, Brown, Dorrance, Favor, Remy, President Harden. Adopt it. Three, I move for passage. Second. Clerk, please call the roll. Bankston, Burroughs, Adi Padilla, Brown, Dorrance, Favor, Remy, President Harden. Passed. 
Finally, we have uh, variance 2393-2022 to grant a variance provisions of section 3312.49, minimum number of parking spaces required, 3312.53, minimum number of parking, minimum number of loading spaces required, 3363.24, building lines and, and manufacturing district, and 3363.27, B1, B2, uh, height in the area regulations of the Columbus City Code, so property located at 1549 Freebus Avenue to, to permit a reduced uh, to develop reduced per permit reduced development standards for self storage in the LM limited manufacturing district the applicant is uh, Ohio one development LLC care of uh, Connie Clemma attorney proposed use is, is a storage use city's department recommendation is approval Columbus Southside area commission recommendation is approval 11 0 do my colleagues have any questions or comments seeing none I first move to accept the entire staff report and new evidence as an exhibit Clerk, please call the roll. Bankston, Burroughs, Sadia Padilla, Brown, Doran's favor, Remy, President Harden. Accept it. Next, I move to adopt the findings of staff as, as the findings of council. Second. Clerk, please call the roll. Bankston, Burroughs, Sadia Padilla, Brown, Doran's favor, Remy, President Harden. Adopt it. Thank you. And finally, I move for passage. Second. Clerk, please call the roll. Bankston, Burroughs, Sadia Padilla, Brown, Doran's favor, Remy, President Harden. Passed. Thank you. Um, before we conclude the uh, the uh, agenda, I did want to apologize. I think I butchered a couple of folks' names, some mm -hmm. of the applicants, so I do apologize about that. Um, but that it concludes our zoning agenda tonight. Is there any other further business coming before the zoning? Seeing none, is there a motion to uh, move to adjourn? Clerk, please call the roll. Bankston, Barosity, Padilla, Brown, Dorrance, Faber, Remy, President Hart. Meeting is adjourned. Have a good evening.